Back in 2011, Mark Andreessen said famously that software is eating the world. Few of us could have imagined the impact that software would have on our day-to-day -day lives. Everything from shopping to dating to transportation has fundamentally changed. So let's talk about an actual company to help us conceptualize how software is eating the world. Uber started out as a simple ride-sharing app, but in only six short years has completely turned the cab industry upside down. Only a few weeks ago, there was a big protest by taxi drivers from my hometown of Toronto. They're upset because their livelihoods are changing, but they're not exactly aware of why. They don't understand that their livelihoods are changing because of software. It's not that taxi drivers are protesting Uber specifically. They're actually protesting exactly what Mark Andreessen said. They're protesting the fact the software is changing their lives and everybody else's. Uber drivers themselves are just a temporary measure until software is powerful enough to drive the cars themselves. Currently, Uber is just a transportation company that doesn't own any cars. But in the future, they're going to be a transportation company that owns cars and doesn't employ any drivers. The cars will simply employ software to drive themselves. This really is one of the quickest and biggest transitions human beings have ever had to make in the course of human history. It's really a transition from an economy powered by manual and physical labor into an economy powered by ideas and automation and software. Not only is Uber changing the taxi industry, but Uber itself is actually valued more than the companies that make the cars that Uber drivers drive. In October 2015, Uber was valued at somewhere between 60 and 70 billion dollars. 60 and 70 billion dollars for a company that's only six years old. To put that in perspective, Ford and Honda are worth about 60 billion dollars and GM's worth about 55 billion dollars. Uber's valuation may change, actually I expect it to change, but the fact that a company in only six years can become worth 60 billion dollars is a real demonstration of the power of software and how fast things are changing. Here's another example. In July 2015, Airbnb was valued at 25 billion dollars. Well, Hilton is valued at about 25 billion dollars. So a company that owns no real estate, owns no hotels, valued at about the same as a company that owns a lot of hotels and a lot of real estate, employs a lot of people versus a company that employs few people. So think about it this way. Two of the biggest companies in the world right now own almost nothing, employ almost nobody, and simply use software to connect people together. Without software, the sharing economy wouldn't exist. The first example of the sharing economy is pretty simple actually. It's just people who have an excess of things, an excess um, amount of resources, and connecting them with people who need those resources like rooms and cars. The sharing economy is only the beginning. As writing software becomes one of the most important new forms of literacy, we're going to see profound change in how we live and work. The next generation works workforce right now is in grade school learning how to write code at the same time they learn how to count, read, and spell their name. Imagine when they become doctors and lawyers and accountants. There's going to be a huge and profound change in how we do business across the board. One of the key steps in this transition from hard worker to knowledge worker is to learn how to communicate with armies of computers to help us do things. There's no way that a single computer has the capacity to do all the things we need to do. The future software is working with clusters of computers and building distributed systems. And that's really why I started this channel. It's to help people learn about things like this. How do you work with clusters of computers? How do you build distributed systems? This is a challenging task even for experienced software developers. So that's why I started this channel, is a place to talk about distributed computing. What systems are going to look like, not today, but 10 years from now? The problem with other content about things like distributed computing is that it's very inaccessible for all but the most experienced programmers. What I really want to do is bring those topics so that people can learn even if they're just starting out in software development. We're not just going to explore how to build things, but also talk about why we build the things we built, more of the human side of programming and software development. So I hope you like what you see here. Thanks for tuning in.